I remember growing up watching all the amazing National Geographic stories and I would have never imagined that one day I would receive a grant from them and become a National Geographic explorer. Today, to be able to follow the legacy of all my favorite conservationists, adventurers, scientists, it's just a dream coming true. And this grant puts coral gardeners one step closer towards scaling up coral reef restoration around the world and go outbound. Yaorana guys, so it's been four years that we are planting corals in Mooria and the global goal will be to scale up what we are doing, coral reef restoration around the planet. And today is the first mission of coral gardeners with the team and we are here in the Tuamutu archipelago on an atoll called Tikeho. And the goal is to assess the health of the reef and define the right reef restoration strategy with the locals. It's on. For this first expedition with the team, I was so glad to get back to my roots, the Tuamutu Atolls, the place where I spent the first couple years of my life having my family as performers. Those islands are basically small dry reefs in the middle of the giant South Pacific Ocean and create unique biospheres with incredible marine life and corals everywhere. People from those places are directly connected to coral reef ecosystems and rely on them to live. That was one of Tayano's and Maorite's biggest dreams, to go out there and experience the unique and wild Tuamotu lifestyle. Having now Evelyn in the team, our own marine biologist and scientist, is so fascinating to mix this knowledge with proper science monitoring methodology. All right, so here we are in Tikehau to assess the reef to see if uh, there is a need of restoring uh, some part of the reef. So for that, we're doing some transect monitoring uh, to count the number of uh, shrimps, sea cucumber, invicts, as we say. Uh, also, we want to know the substrate, so if there is some corals, is they alive or not, is there some sand or rock, and also if there is some fish, if there is still some herbivorous fish and carnivorous fish around go. here. Okay, go. We just arrived to a new island, a little motu we say in Taishan, and we'll be there to have the lunch and then do couple transect monitoring, it's on. So this is also a bird sanctuary. So there will be a lot of phosphate with their poop, basically. And so it will be a pretty interesting to see how the, the reef looks like here. It's also a bird sanctuary. <laughs> it is so good to use this knowledge and methods in order to map and assess the health of the reef there. You don't always have to be a graduated scientist to do simple but yet efficient science and get to take decisions based on data. What we did a lot, almost every day, was assessing different parts of the atoll's reef. First thing you do is describing the overall information, characteristics about the area, and then using the drone to map it. Then we were splitting the team in two to put 100 meters transects in order to gather a maximum of data, such as the number and types of fish, marine life, inverts, substrates, and stressors. That's a simple way to just in a couple hours get an idea of the area's conditions. The goal was to replicate these methods as much as possible all around the lagoon and if possible outside the reef. Then you have all those underwater field papers to sort and export in Excel documents to be able to get the data summary, graphs, and results. If you repeat this over time, it's also an amazing way to see how the reef is evolving along the years. To do so, we were super lucky to have logistic support from Chris from the Ninamu, using speed bobs or even his sailing boat to be on the water all day.
<laughs> Doing a little contest. Qui a gagné Qui a gagné The winner is Tayano. I was fascinated to see the boys just being like at home in their elements and being so comfortable under and above the water. Even if some areas were full of life with some of the most beautiful corals we ever seen, there were still some spots that were less vibrant and could potentially benefit from coral restoration. The locals also observed a decline in the abundance and diversity of the marine life in the lagoon, and they expressed a strong desire to preserve their legacy. So we went back on a second expedition to raise awareness and train them with two workshops. We showed them how to do coral fragmentation and ropes, creating a nursery where the corals will grow before being planted back onto damaged parts of the reef. Having the opportunity to empower the islanders, like the fishermen, the kids, to protect their reef was so cool. They know so much already about their island home and their knowledge, I think it's gold. We really want Coral Gardener to become a full-time job, a part of that blue economy. And I can already tell you that some people, they are just made for it. The first outbound expedition really confirmed our vision to have some coral gardeners all around the world taking care of their local reef ecosystems because they need it alive just as much as we all do.